um, the with the carpool off. So uh, first off, my name is Doug Shepman. Last name is spelled S C H E P M A N, and I'm a spokesperson for the Denver Police Department. And I'm joined by Melissa Taylor from uh, the Denver Fire Department. So um, we responded out here on, on a call at 1:38 uh, this afternoon um, on a report that a uh, Denver firefighter, um, an on-duty firefighter, was in his vehicle um, westbound here on Colfax uh, when a woman jumped into his vehicle and stabbed him. Uh, the firefighter exited the vehicle, came back here to the fire station, um, was um, received medical care here, and was also transported to the hospital. Um, Melissa will talk about the firefighter's condition. Um, we had some witnesses on scene who pointed us in the direction of a female suspect who uh, was taken into custody um, and is currently being held for investigation of aggravated assault. And um, at this time, we don't know, you know what the motive was for this stabbing. Uh, we're still in the early, ages, early stages of this investigation um, and hope to learn that uh, through the course of uh, witness interviews and further investigation. So I'll turn it over to Melissa now who can speak about the firefighter and uh, the firefighter's condition. Thanks, Doug. So the firefighter in question was indeed the fire department chief, Chief Eric Tade. Still, at, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Sure. Say. Chief Eric Tade, T-A-D-E. He did sustain minor injuries, non-life threatening, and is at this, this point expected to make a full recovery. Um, as the DPD, uh, as Doug mentioned, uh, motive is unknown at this time. Um, we have alerted all of our firefighters as to the situation that occurred um, so that they can be aware. But um, we are really, really fortunate that, that, he's, uh, that these injuries were not more serious. Did this, uh, did this suspect have the appearance of a homeless person or a person on the street? I can't speak to, know, to what that what the individual no, looked like. Any, any idea? No, I mean, the, the, our suspect is an adult female, yeah. um, and she was taken into custody uh, very close by. Does she or I never take know each other at all? Any indication there? It, I mean, at this time, we're, we're still in the early stages of this investigation, and we're trying to piece together um, whether or not there is a connection between the victim and the suspect. Where did was he he sustained no? injuries on his body? He sustained injuries to his hand and a superficial wound to his uh, right leg. Was he in a marked vehicle? Would that woman have known that he was an official with the city? No, she would not have known that. He was in a black SUV. What was he doing at the time? I'm not sure exactly where he was heading, but my he he parks on this end of the of the fire station, and so I'm suspecting he was coming or going from a meeting. And his position is um, he's the. Chief of this? Chief of the Denver Fire Department. Oh, okay, no, I, I didn't know if he was here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Have any additional any questions? questions? He's at the hospital right now. Can you say what hospital he was taken to? Yeah, he was transported to Denver Health and has been rated in fair fair condition right now. Can you just, was anybody else in the car with him? No, there wasn't anyone else in the vehicle. And were there witnesses to what happened? DPD was able to find some witnesses. I'll let Doug speak to that. Yes, there, there were witnesses. Um, witnesses actually helped uh, locate the suspect in this case. They pointed officers to um, our suspect who was taken into custody. Um, and again, we're still in the process of interviewing those witnesses and trying to piece together exactly what happened here and, um, and why. Just was, was it random? We don't know that at this time. Was he stopped at the light or was he like moving and driving? My understanding is that the vehicle was stopped when the, the female jumped into the car. We have one witness that said both doors were open going through the intersection moving. So it, it appears that the, the firefighter actually got out of the vehicle and the vehicle may have rolled uh, farther through the intersection once he exited the vehicle after being stabbed. He was the only person in the vehicle, correct? Correct. And it also looked like there was kind of some blood spots leading into the fire station. Did he come back in here? Yes, he did come into the firehouse to seek medical aid. So he was, um, the initial uh, medical assistance was provided by fire uh, firefighters here at Station 1. You said adult female. A young adult, older person? I, I don't, honestly don't have an age on, on the suspect at this time. And were there any reports of whether she said anything to him or anybody nearby? And that would all be part of the investigation. What time was that? Uh, the original call came in at 1.38 p.m. today. So she's currently being held uh, for investigation of aggravated assault at this time, and the investigation is ongoing. 
can I, any of you just speak to, I mean, kind of your thoughts right now. This is maybe bizarre, maybe motivated, maybe not random at a time when, you know, there's been violence against officers around the country, you know, things like that. And anything going through your head that you want to share with the people that see this at home? I think from our, per, our perspective, anything that we shared along those lines right now would be speculative as far as what her motive was or what happened, what transpired in the moments leading up to this. So I, I wouldn't feel comfortable speculating what she saw or what she was thinking when this happened. So. Thanks, guys. Yes. Did you recover the weapon? Yes. Did you recover it?